Um, my name's Sarah and Ms Rickon very kindly has agreed to come and talk to us today about retinal detachment. So thank you very much for sparing your time for us. You're welcome. So just to start off, can you describe a bit about the anatomy and exactly what we're talking about with retinal detachment? Okay. So a retinal detachment um, is a condition where the retina gradually moves away from being attached to the inside wall of the eye. Okay. So if we think about the retina being a lining of nerve cells mm -hmm. that line the inside wall of the eye, just like wallpaper would line the inside of the room. Mm -hmm. In a retinal detachment, that layer begins to separate away from the wall of the eye, usually as a result of a tear or a break in the retina. Okay, fine. And how do you find patients present? What do they describe? So patients can present with a varying number of um, symptoms depending on how advanced the retinal detachment is when they okay. present. So initially, patients may just present with some um, flashing lights, or what we call photopsia, mm -hmm. or they may present with lots of floaters in the eye. As the retinal detachment progresses, they might begin to notice a shadow or a curtain or a patch in their vision that they can't see through. Eventually, the retina keeps detaching further and further and moves centrally, and as it does so, their vision may finally drop. Okay, and do they experience any pain with this, or is it normally a painless? No, this is a painless, painless. condition. And um, what, what causes it? What predisposes <coughs> patients to it? The, probably the most common cause um, of, of a retinal detachment is something that we call regimatogenous retinal detachment. Okay. And that is where, over time, the vitreous gel that fills the cavity of the eye mm -hmm separates away from the retina, something that we call a vitreous detachment. Mm -hmm. That happens to all of us naturally at some point in our time. However, in some patients, they may have some weakness or thinning of the retina that causes the retina to tear at this critical point. Patients who have this weakness um, can often... Um, one of the common predisposing factors for weakness or thinning of the retina is people who are quite short-sighted and the more short-sighted you are, it tends to have a slightly increased risk of having tears or breaks when the vitreous detaches. Okay. There are other causes of retinal detachment that may predispose you. For example, if you had a blow or tr direct trauma to the eye, you could develop a retinal detachment. There are different types of retinal detachment. So for example, we, there's a type of detachment called a tractional retinal detachment. And that's a detachment which is caused by, as the name suggests, pulling or traction on the retinal surface in the absence of a break or a tear. And the most common cause of that is something like diabetic eye disease, which can cause proliferation and traction. And the final other cause of retinal detachment is an exudative retinal detachment. And that's a condition where there is excess fluid produced, usually by the retinal pigment epithelium or choroid, and that excess fluid production causes the separation to occur. In those cases the separation is much more gradual and so the symptoms are less pronounced and the causes of exudative detachment are many but predominant causes are things like inflammatory diseases and tumours. Right, okay. And so say we have a patient that we suspect they have, they're describing the symptoms that you described, how would we go about diagnosing? One of the main things about retinal detachment is that the symptoms are indeed so classic. The okay. classic flashes and floaters followed by yeah. a curtain crossing the vision makes the, the history one of the most important indicators of yeah. the condition. And so one of the, the things that we find is that if you notice that history accompanied with visual loss, you should have a high index of suspicion of retinal detachment. Some of the things that you will notice, if for example you want to use your ophthalmoscope, you may notice that the patient has a relative afferent pupillary defect if, for example, the retinal detachment has crossed over and the macula is affected. So with severe visual loss, you may get that. You may also notice an absence of the red reflex in these cases. But it's usually the symptoms that are the main thing that help you. Okay. And how do you go about treating these patients? Or the most important thing about retinal detachment is that these patients are referred very quickly for review by an ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. Timing is of the essence with retinal detachments because if we can get a retinal detachment early and prevent its progression, we can potentially present, prevent long-term visual loss. Mm -hmm. So for us, we would aim or hope to operate on a patient with a macula sparing retinal detachment mm -hmm. within 24 hours, that kind of speed. Yeah, absolutely. 
once the vision has been lost or the macula has been affected, we have slightly more time to treat the patient because we're not trying to prevent a, a visual yeah. loss, but we're trying to restore vision as quickly as possible. And in that case, we'd want to operate within a week of the, of the presenting complaint. Okay. So early, early treatment is very important for this condition. Early referral to yeah. Um, okay, so we like. Thank you very much. We'd like to just finish by asking everybody if there is sort of three, three or four takeaway points that you think are the most important things for students to remember about retinal attachment. I think the history is key. Mm -hmm. Anybody complaining of a gradual shadow coming across their vision with flashes and floaters have a high index of suspicion of retinal detachment. Yeah. And if in doubt with any case of visual loss, get someone to look at it quickly. Thank you very much.